feed one upon the other, and I think very often a jury is convinced of things that they possibly shouldn't be convinced of, based on innuendos and say-sos, and as opposed to... That would have been much more beneficial to the world and to the city and uh, being outside. If you had anything to change, what would it be? I probably wouldn't be so outspoken. I probably would lead a little lower profile and uh, not have a lot to say. But uh, as far as the courts and the country, I, you know, I have no bitterness. I mean, I, I still think it's the greatest court system and the greatest country in the world, but they still leave a lot to be desired. I'm sort of glad they didn't invest now because I think <laughs> the movie turned <laughs> that's right. I think it turned out very nice for them. Each and every one of them. It's just one of those things that was Are you serious about movie making? Do you want to be a movie mogul? I don't know about a movie mogul, but uh, I'm very serious about the movie making. In fact, we've moved our facilities from MGM in Hollywood to Atlanta. And we now have uh, proper facilities for even editing and dubbing and things of that sort, which we did not heretofore have, which are housed in, uh, in the entertainment complex with General Record Corporation that I also own. And the Sound Pit, which has uh, facilities for uh, overdubbing screen work and, and this type of thing. And we're very serious. The Sound Pit alone was an investment of a million and a half dollars. Yeah, I'm not interested in the Fox Theater. I don't feel like I can make a living with the Fox Theater. But I think I would be one of the few individuals who could get it to a point to where it's at least breaking even and supporting itself. And I could use a facade. I'm not interested in If they don't want to sell me the Fox Theater, it's fine. I made the offer because I wanted to do it for the city and for the people in the city. Living on this hill in this house. And we're trying to uh, do something with it. And, uh, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to clean up. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that they are, are nervous at best about having to do business with Mike Thevis. Uh, we met with Lieutenant Strickland and several other uh, officers with the Homicide Division. Mr. Thevis answered the questions as candidly and as honestly as he could. Uh, there were generally fishing, apparently, for speculation, which is the same that uh, one can read in the newspaper kind of thing. What type of speculation that this was uh, a murder committed uh, maybe over competition in the adult book business? No, it didn't seem to relate to that to any extent at all. What were they trying to, to suggest to you? They wanted to know what suggestions that Mr. Stavis uh, would have in this regard, and of course he doesn't know. That the people that are in the smut industry, by and large, almost every one of them have previous criminal records. And they are in an industry that I would have to categorize as being a racket industry, much the same as the gambling uh, racket, uh, much the same as the lottery racket, much the same as the bootleg liquor uh, racket. I think it is a racket type of operation. And in rackets, you, it's quite common to see uh, one racketeer snuff out another racketeer. Well, of course, here about a week ago, you know, we had a, a man by the name of Ivan Woods that was uh, shot to death out here in southeast Atlanta. Of course, he'd been known to be in the lottery uh, business, uh, and there's no uh, evidence yet as to what caused his killing, but I would imagine that it very probably had something to do with the type of business that he was in, just as I think probably the type of business that Mr. Hanna was in had something to do with his death. Today, police pursue the angle that Hannah's dealings in Atlanta's pornography business led to his death. This morning, Lieutenant C.J. Strickland questioned Mike Thevis, a man who's been called the kingpin of Atlanta's smut industry. Thevis is believed to be the last person to have seen Hannah before his death. Thevis and his Maryland attorney, Bob Smith, faced reporters after this morning's 90-minute session. 
so far as I know, they've given no indication they have any further desire to talk with him. Did you answer most of the questions or did your client? Invariably. Mr. Mr. Thebus answered the questions fairly and candidly. When did you go to New York, Mr. Thebus? Mr. Thebus did not go to New York. That was erroneous. That was erroneous. Yes, he was not in New York. So he was in town all, all the while? He was available at all times. Well, why was it so difficult for the police to uh, locate him if, in fact, they were trying to? If, in fact, they were trying to, they tell us they weren't. And that's just what was told me by Lieutenant Strickland. No, sir. Nothing at all. I think the whole thing is pretty ludicrous. Uh, I don't have any knowledge as to what happened to uh, Mr. Hanna. He was a personal friend of mine, and I just think it's a terrible tragedy. Thank you. And this is my guest also of the evening, the United States Marshal. <laughs> Under what provision? Well, the court has simply said she's in my custody and a marshal is to be alone. And uh, we are perfectly comfortable with a marshal. I wasn't going anywhere when I had her with me on the trip to Somerville, and I'm not going anywhere now. She's done nothing wrong. She stands ready to meet any accusation they want to make and let them make it or let them go away. How long will the marshal be uh, along? The government is con uh, apparently is indicating that... Uh, uh, Ms. McLean knows something about Thevis' escape. Could you comment on that? She knows nothing. That's it? That, there's no further comment needed. Would she say that for us? Not at this time. She's not answering Mr. any Garland, questions on my advice. The circumstances of her being taken into custody. Uh, how far are you going to pursue your complaint with the, uh, with the Attorney General and the Justice Department about the conduct of the FBI? Hey, since you were about to forget... McLean, why were you why were you crying in the courtroom? At, at this time, she's not going to answer any questions. Will she talk to us about the tears? She may talk a little later about that. But this is the first time she's been free in over 48 hours. It's been a very traumatic day. She's in my custody, and I'm going to take her and we go into my office. She'll be more relaxed later and may at that time consent to an interview. But at this time, she's just going to collect her wits and uh, get ready to take the next step in our appeal to the Fifth Circuit. How do you feel about the uh, custody and the bond provisions, Ms. Garland? Well, I have no object to, objection to her being in my custody rather than in jail. I think the bond is excessive. Uh, as I said to the court, we are going to appeal that to the Fifth Circuit. Bobby Lee Cook is preparing that at this and taken. The record's already been ordered. Mr. Cook and I are preparing the appeal. We expect to present it to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans tomorrow at least for the next 48 hours while we attempt to make a $300,000 bond, and I don't believe we're going to be able to, that this young lady is able to do that, and we're going to seek that it be vacated in the Fifth Circuit. I just talked to Dub King of the Dub King Bonding Company. He said he would be willing to go $125,000 at only 5%, so that would seem that it would make it easy for you to make the bond. Well, it's coming down. Originally, the premium normally is $30,000 to secure her release, a citizen unaccused that they say may be a witness. We think that's unreasonable. I don't think a citizen should have to pay $30,000 to walk the streets and they should make their charge or they should release her. Now we may or may not be able to negotiate uh, lesser amounts than that. And that's why the court's given us the time to do so placed her in my custody. I think he recognizes that we're not going to flee. As far as it can be pursued, it'll be pursued, and there's a high probability there'll be a civil suit for the outrageous capture of her uh, by the FBI acting as a Gestapo police. It's a disgrace that that can happen in a free country, and it happened, and we're not going to forget about it, and it's not going away. We're going to pursue it as far as the law allows. You think you were fairly treated by Judge Moy? I think the bond is too high, as we have indicated to the court. We're thankful that she's out, but we think the whole thing is a sham by the government. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who sleeps on the couch? I'm not sure. <laughs>
put it here. at two o'clock and we can make no comments. Well, was it constructive? Can I comment? Well, I would say, uh, I'll try to call you first thing tomorrow. All right. Thank you, later. David. Looks like the case will be adjourned. Do you You'll hear about it. I think, uh, The fingerprinting begins right away. The $6,000 cash will be taken to FBI headquarters in Washington for examination, probably on Monday. And the judge's decision on whether the trial will begin in August or November should come by the middle of this week. At the federal courthouse in downtown Atlanta, this is Terry Casey, Action News. Ms. McLean, what's going on up there this first day so far? I love why are you optimistic? What leads you to optimism? I'm innocent. Is this a deliberate stalling tactic or what? Absolutely not. We have a hearing underway relating to whether the government has illegally used the immunized testimony before the grand jury when they immunized her to make this case against her. And this is to simply explore that. We're ready for trial. We don't want her to lie. What is the government's plan of attack here? No comment. How many witnesses do you plan to call? Yeah. No. Mm -mm. No. No, thank you. The first day of trial has ended without a jury being impaneled. And as far as Patricia McLean's lawyers are concerned, that's fine. They don't think a trial is needed, much less a jury. They say the government is going to this one. At the federal courthouse, this is Terry Casey, Action News. Would you just capsulize what the agreement is? The court has ordered a... They put each other on it.
Tell us what happened, basically. Well, truthfully, I don't know. I wasn't here. What, what was on the report? On the report that uh, when they checked to see if Mr. Thevis was still in the office, that he couldn't be found. And he last he was seen by a jail authority was in that office just over there? And he went out this door. Where does this door lead? This door leads out into the carport where we keep our uh, squad cars. Did you open it? Did you open it? Yes, sir. Button over here. Yes, sir. That button would have had to have been pushed open in order for him to get out. Like that. I see. You step out in the other room and let me hit the button. Okay. Now what happens? Yes. Okay, if you will, walk over to the... Okay. The question is whether or not it could be heard over here. All right. No, you stay over there, Dick. Okay, so we go through that. Where do we go? Right out here. He would have had to pass through somebody if he came this route. He'd have to come back through here. Ordinarily, there's someone back here in this apartment. So the route directly to the parking lot would have been the easiest. That's what I would think. Now, in order to get out this I see. I see. I see. Hey, you can't be on this man. Pardon? I can't, I'm not going to read That's not an electrical lock. Was he considered a trustee to the point that he had pretty much freedom to move about as he wished? No, sir. In fact, he worked back there on his case reports or whatever it might have been. Uh, and uh, that was the extent of it. When the uh, lawyer... ...in there and get a little shot, I'll let him tell us. And then when, when you hear me ask him a question other than that, turn around on him, okay? You say this is where Mr. Thebus stayed when he was here? Yes, sir, that's where Mr. Thebus... No, wait. All right, you... ...stayed until they brought the two other federal prisoners in, and we incarcerated him back in the federal cell block, maximum security. Did he have freedom to move about when he was staying in this particular cell block? Right around through here. Just in this area here? Yes, sir. You were about to say that when Miss McLean came, you thought the sheriff was introduced uh, by the lawyers. Now, what lawyers they were, I don't know, as being Mr. Davis's wife. These so-called sexual visits, where did they take place? They were supposed to have taken in my office. However, when I walked into the six officers that was observing this, I turned the lights on. When I looked into the window, she was sitting on his lap. Both of them were fully clothed. I ran the other officers back to their respective departments. After that happened, Mr. Charlo, which was on the desk, went to the other departments, invited the men over to observe this act and uh, along with uh, Mr. Hebron, which is another one of our deputies, he observed the act. And one state 
policeman which was out of uniform and not on duty. Now, I didn't give any of the names because I didn't think that it was their fault for being over here. They were invited over here by Mr. Charlaw. So in any case, you're saying that the so-called sexual visits, that there were no uh, acts of sex performed as far as you witnessed? As far as I witnessed, there was no sex act going on. Are you aware of the FBI allegations that money changed hands? Could you speak to that? The only thing I know about is what I read in the paper this morning. And I don't take any stock of what I read in the paper this morning because I gave one reporter a, a full report of it. She didn't put a thing in the paper as to what I reported. What about the so-called braggadocia by Thebas that he, quote, bought off the head man at the jail? I don't know anything about that. Are you aware of that allegation? No, sir. Well, just to clear the air, do you, do you personally know about anybody here at the jail receiving any money? No, personally, no. Only what I read in the paper this morning. What about the allegation about the so-called sexual encounters between him and Miss McLean? That I cannot say that it would that it took place. When I looked into the mirror or into the window. Okay. Okay. You just want me to do this for you. How was he? But he could have something like this, or how? how oh, uh, see, yeah, he he yeah. Any of his personal items here? You got it. And you can look at that from over there. Yes, sir. No, I wish I showed back and showed you just exactly what happened. Is, is that also? I'll call it the Indiana Bureau of Investigation. Phoebus apparently was sitting at this desk making phone calls when he allegedly got up, went out this door here, out into this small hallway. He was heading toward this door here, which leads to the outside, but it's locked. Before he could get out, he had to come over here. Let me do that again. I didn't want you to push this button. You can go around with the cameraman and he can see me back in here. Okay, fine. Okay, with the light off. I'll see if you can see where I am. So Mike Thebus walked out this door to freedom, apparently going out into the parking lot where the sheriff's cars are. Pat McLean, his girlfriend, is now charged with aiding and abetting in his escape. And what about Thebus? Some are speculating he may be in Costa Rica or Colombia, a place that has harbored United States criminals before. From New Albany, Indiana, Don McClellan, Action News. So Mike Thebus walked out this door to freedom into the sheriff's parking lot. His girlfriend, Pat McLean, now charged with aiding and abetting in his escape. And what about Thebas? Some are speculating he may be in Colombia or Costa Rica, a place where criminals from the United States have been harbored before. Don McClellan, Action News, New Albany, Indiana. So Mike Thebas walked out this door to freedom, a door which leads to the sheriff's parking lot. His girlfriend, Pat McLean, now charged with aiding and abetting in his escape. Thebus was, was sitting at this desk. This is the chief's office in the jail. He was making phone calls when he allegedly got up, went out this door, which leads into a small hallway, 
and he was heading for the outside, wanted to go out this door here, which is locked. Before he could get out, he had to come over here, push this button, which then leads to an inner corridor, and then the door to the outside. Now this is where he was kept until the other two federal prisoners came in. So Mike Thevis walked out this door to freedom to the sheriff's parking lot. His girlfriend, Pat McLean, now charged with aiding and abetting in his escape. Thevis, where's he? Some are speculating he may be in Colombia or Costa Rica, countries which before have harbored United States criminals. Don McClellan, Action News, New Albany, Indiana. I put my mic in her face and I said, are you going to go meet Mike now? And she glared at me like... That's just like... So, uh... She's in Miami, that's very, that seems obvious to me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, how could you have betrayed me like this? You know, I think she really thought that since I was the only... And she just kind of was like, oh, isn't this a pain in the neck? You know, it was another human side of her coming out, and then I just kind of smiled at her, you know, like, I'm sure this is... While the exact reason for Ms. McLean's appearance before the grand jury is still secret, it appears more and more as if the government is trying to work up information that could lead to more criminal action against the already imprisoned Mike Thevis. Terry Casey, Action News, the Federal Courthouse. This is a dirty blue 1965 or 66 Chevrolet. In fact, it's a 66 Chevrolet, but I can guarantee it was not along Riverside Drive the morning of the murder because it belongs to me. So if you saw a car similar to this parked along Riverside Drive this past Wednesday morning, the morning of the murder, the police would like to talk to you. You can call the chief of Fulton County Detectives, Captain Lewis Graham, at 572-3211. That's 572-3211. If you saw a car like this parked along Riverside Drive near Johnson Ferry Road this past Wednesday morning. I'm Don McClellan, Action News. Five, four, three, two. An ambush shooting in an exclusive section of North Fulton County. I'm Don McClellan. I'll tell you about it.
say it against the garbage man. I've been told every hour on the hour, so I hope it shows up. Uh, we think that he's probably going to be dead. We're going to make sure right now. I'm going to make a phone call to make sure. What were the circumstances of the shooting? Don't know yet. Uh, people that, uh, uh, that's been in the news lately. We'd heard they were connected with the Mike Thevis organization. Can you confirm that? Yes. In what way are they connected? Well, right now, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to, uh, uh, the, um, federal strike force. Uh, uh, these people were definitely connected, at least one of them were. And uh, I don't want to get into that too much right now. He was Thevis' attorney, however. Uh, no. He was not one of Thevis' attorney? Can you tell me what the relationship was? No, not right now. Uh, it will become evident as we uh, uh, put it together. Billing, was it a setup? It appears to be, yes. It appears to be definitely, yes. And what is the link to organized crime? I don't know yet. I don't know. Uh, you, think you mentioned the strike force. Uh, I'll be talking to them about uh, at least one of these people that's involved here. You think there's a third person involved here? Or was it just between these two people? There's definitely a third person. People we first found out about. Right now, I'd rather not, because we can need to talk to somebody about that. Uh, and that's where I'm headed right now. The daughter, they, or, the, or, the, or the wife of one of the people who was The here. girlfriend. The girlfriend. Yes. Were they both shot up there? Pardon, have it off absolutely. Door? Yes, absolutely. Uh, a person feel that way. Famous connection. Thevis connection. Thevis connection. Can you yes. elaborate on that at all? Not right now. found in the drive was carrying a stolen tag. It's registered to a Mercury, but it's on a Buick. Five, four, three, two. The car found in the drive was carrying a stolen tag. It's registered to a Mercury, but as you see, it's on a Buick. the men apparently came to the scene in was found in the driveway. You didn't pull out. Five, four, three, two. An ambush slaying with an apparent Mike Thevis connection. I'm Don McClellan. I'll tell you about it.